Hey guys, it's the Big Sal, and I just want to preface this episode by saying, yeah, it's kind of been a while, I'll give you that. Now, let's get right into this, because I know the only thing you really want to see is the gym battles. You don't really care about anything else, and that's fine. So I'm going to cut pretty much everything else out and give you some commentary of the gym battles, how they went, and then of course, I'll do a more traditional version of the red battle. So, with that out of the way... Here is the final episode of my Pokemon Heart Gold Nuzlocke. I've had a lot of fun making this series, and I hope you guys enjoy the episode. The first thing I did was spend entirely too long messing around with all the electrical switches and surges, Jim. This part actually got me angry, and it took way too freaking long. But once I actually got it, um, you know, I thought the fight would be easy, but, uh, well, just watch. He has five Pokemon, damn. Gym, gym leader music is not messing around here. 51? Uh-oh. But you know what? It was fine at the end of the day. Manny's Earthquake really came in handy here. He managed to outspeed and one-shot almost every member of the team. Uh, except for Electabuzz. <laughs> Electabuzz. Oof! <sighs> Oof! <laughs> that could have been very bad. We have to switch out. But even then, you know, the gym battle went well. We got the badge. No problem. First badge, done. On to Saffron City. Other than the fact that I was scared to death of Sabrina's Alakazam, the opening of the battle went pretty well. She led with her Espeon, which I paralyzed, and then took down with two signal beams from Alexandria. She then brought out her surprisingly bulky Mr. Mime, because even after Hail and a Blizzard, it was still on half health, so I had to use another Earthquake from Manny to take it out. Then she brought out her terrifying Alakazam, which I thought I would be able to deal with with Manny and Blizzard and Earthquake, but I forgot that... Um, this thing has energy ball, and, uh, oh, it doesn't do neutral. Oh, it's a super effective. Oh my god, no, 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 oh. Yeah, it did almost kill Manny, and Earthquake only did about two-thirds of its health, so I decided to switch out to Alexandria and hopefully potion stall it. Then Alakazam got a crit energy ball, which was completely uncalled for, so I fired back with a signal beam that luckily crit, killing Alakazam and winning us the Marsh Badge. Next we fought Erica, which proved to be relatively easy. She sent out Jumpluff, which outsped and got off a U-turn, and sent in Tangela, which was no match for Manny's Avalanche. I then sent in Friday to deal with her Blossom, which used Sunny Day, boosting Friday's Fire-type attacks, and it went down with a few Flame Wheels. I took a bit of a risk and left in Friday to Fire Blast of Victory Bell, which thankfully one shot. Next Jumpluff came back in, and I sent Manny in to deal with it with a quick Avalanche, killing Jumpluff, and winning us the Rainbow Badge. Janine's gym was kind of annoying with the walls, but luckily the trainers were extremely easy. Uh, I did forget that one of these would eventually be the real one, though. Sorry to disappoint you, I'm only joking, I'm the- uh-oh. Oh, oh crap, um, oh man, uh, okay. I wasn't ready, I- <laughs> I got too used to thinking they were fake. So, I was fighting her with a not fully healed team, but her team is at least five levels below where Erica's was, and so this battle was a cakewalk. After it confused me with Supersonic, her Crobat went down with one side beam. Ariados came out next, and Kenya dispatched it with a quick drill peck. Bean again one shot with side beam on her wheezing, and Kenya took out Janine's second Ariados with another drill peck. Finally was her Venomoth, and I left in Kenya to use another drill peck, killing Venomoth and winning us the Soul Badge. I took a bit of a break from gym leaders to go deal with some shenanigans at the power plant. Team Rocket stole their, their graphics card or something, and I had to go get it back. So I went to Cerulean Gym to put a stop to it, and I met a uh, very interesting guy there. Not good for me if seen by somebody. Oh no, you've seen me already. I make big mistake. Hey you, forget you see me, okay? You've seen, heard, know nothing, okay? Bye bye, Coco. <laughs> oh man. I, you know what, that's my favorite thing in Pokemon games, the casual racism. I then proceeded to beat him in a battle in about five seconds, and I think I might have ruined his day. Beat you for sure, will Team Rocket. Come from Johto, will they? Mine allies, yes. Well, revenge they are. The music... Team Rocket, bye-bye a go-go? Broken it... Broken up it is, says you. Guys, the music stopped. Oh no, should I do what now on from me? Okay, I, my country, go home. Make Team Rocket, I will. Goodbye, so long. <laughs> Just broke that guy's dreams! So after all that, I went back to the power plant and gave the guy back his RTX 3090 so I could get on with my journey. I decided to head to Route 25, where I encountered Misty and, uh... Uh, oh no. Uh, uh-oh. Oh crap. Um, I think I interrupted something here, guys. Do you know what they call people like you? Cock blockers? 
pests. Oh, okay. I went back to her gym to battle her to make it up to her, and, uh, well, this battle went pretty well. Alexandria one-shot the Golduck with a critical hit discharge, then Bean two-hit KO'd Quagsire with Psybeam. She then sent out Starmie, which kind of scared me because I overestimated Starmie's ability to take hits as well as dish them out, but I realized that Starmie was definitely very much of a glass cannon, and Alexandria one-shot it with discharge. Lapras was next, and after put me to sleep and almost killed Alexandria with a crit ice beam. It doesn't outspeed, does it? It should. Ice beam might do a bit more here, only because of stab. Whoa, 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 whoa! I do not care for that at all. I realized I could just set up a light screen, which I did, then followed it with two discharges to kill Lapras and win the Cascade Badge. I then decided to head back to the Cape to encounter Suicune and finally beat my true rival, Eugene. Or whatever his name is. I prepared for a hard battle with this terrifying beast I caught it. Moving on. I decided to head over to Route 11 for a confrontation with my ex-wife who was blocking the road. I successfully abducted her, shoved her in my PC, and moved on to Pewter City to challenge Brock. Graveler led the battle, and Erwin easily took care of it with Waterfall. Alexandria discharged the Kabutops, and Erwin came back in to deal with Rhyhorn and Onyx. He finished with Lord Helix himself, which Alexandria also okoed with Discharge, winning us the Boulder Badge. After fighting Brock, I took a quick trip over to the Seafoam Islands to fight Blaine at his new gym. This battle was extremely easy, as Erwin basically carried the entire thing. Waterfall the Macargo, one shot. Waterfall the Magmar, one shot. Waterfall the Rapidash, surprisingly, one shot. And we won the Volcano Badge, just like that. I surfed over to the remnants of Cinnabar Island and I met, uh, Purple? I forget his name. It's not very important, though. Purple turned out to be the final gym leader, though, so after showing him my Goofy Goober fan club membership, I mean gym badges, he told me to battle him at his gym. Purple was by far the most difficult gym leader, with a high-level and varied team of mixed attackers. He led with Executor, and I mistakenly led with Manny, so I had to switch out to Friday. Friday ate the Executor's Leaf Storm, and Executor didn't stand a chance with the special attack reduction. My Fire Blast Gamble paid off, nearly one-shotting the Executor. Of course, Purple healed up, and the next Fire Blast just barely didn't kill, but did burn, killing the Executor. Next was Rhydon, which hit Erwin with Stone Edge, and we fired back with a Waterfall, Okoing the Rhydon. Machamp came out next, and I brought in Bean. Machamp used Earthquake, and I fired back with Psybeam. The next turn I healed, and Machamp hit with Stone Edge. Next turn, I outsped after Trick Room ran out, and took out Machamp with another Psybeam. Arcanine came out next and intimidated Erwin, who was able to take it out with Surf after a bit of healing annoyance. Pidgeot came out next, and I put in Manny to deal with it. Manny used Blizzard, doing a lot of damage to Pidgeot and freezing, and the next turn I killed it with Avalanche. Purple's final Pokemon was Gyarados, which was easily dealt with using Alexandria's Discharge, phrasing people. Anyway, Gyarados went down easily, and we won the Earth Badge. With all the Kanto Gym Leaders beaten, I went to visit Professor Oak, who gave us access to Mount Silver, and consequently to the end of the game. We were finally ready to challenge the final battle of the game, Red. After literal hours of grinding. Okay, you're about to hear my gripes about this game. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love it, but there's certain problems here I cannot ignore. The most glaring one being the leveling. This game goes from Purple's battle, with Pokemon in the high 50s and low 60s, to Red's team being entirely in the mid to high 80s. Obviously, the game developers weren't expecting you to go straight to Red's battle, but rather to go re-challenge gyms or work on your Pokedex or do something else. But in a Nuzlocke, especially one like this where I have a deadline to meet, that's not possible, and so to the grind it is. I spent hours speeding up the game and grinding up the team from the mid-level 50s entirely to level 75 just to stand a chance of beating Red. I have actually been having pain in my left hand from holding down the tab key to speed up the game to the point where I can't bend it back without getting a shooting pain in my finger. But, it'll all be worth it once I win. So, here's how the battle went. Hey buddy, I got a Nuzlocke to win. You're in my way. Red led with his Pikachu, which I easily countered by leading with Manny. I outsped an O-Code with a Stab Earthquake. Next was Blastoise, and I decided to send an Alexandria. I set up a light screen because Blastoise was a special attacker that hit with 100% accuracy Blizzard that I needed to weaken. Blastoise hit with Blizzard again, and I fired back with Discharge. Red healed Blastoise, I used Signal Beam thinking I would kill though. Blastoise fired off another Blizzard, almost killing Alexandria, who fired back with Discharge and almost killed the Blastoise. The Hail took care of him, and almost took care of Alexandria too. Next was Snorlax. The only fighting type move I had was Super Power on Erwin, 
which only did about half of its health. I switched into Manny to get rid of Erwin's debuffs from Superpower, and decided to keep him in and hit him with an Earthquake, which almost killed, but I once again, the hail took care of the problem. Halfway done. Lapras came out next, and I decided to send an Alexandria and heal her up. Lapras hit me with a Stab Blizzard, doing about half health. I gambled and hoped to outspeed with Light Screen, which I did, weakening the Blizzard. I healed Alexandria once again, and it used Blizzard again. Discharged at about half, and managed to paralyze. And Alexandria tanked another Blizzard, and fired back with another Discharge, killing Lapras. Only two more to go. Red sent out Charizard, and I decided to stay in with Alexandria for a bit to see what I could do. Charizard used Flare Blitz, which did a lot to Alexandria, but Static paralyzed the Charizard. I healed up, and it hit with Flare Blitz again. I decided not to bother with Potion Stalling, and just switch out to Friday to tank the Flare Blitz. Friday came out, and Charizard used Dragon Pulse, knocking it down to half health. I couldn't switch to Erwin, because he was also half health, and so I made the very difficult decision of sacrificing Friday in order to heal up Erwin and send him in for a chance at beating Charizard. And Charizard used Air Slash, and Friday unfortunately went down. I sent in Erwin, who killed Charizard with a critical hit waterfall. Finally was Venusaur, and I sent in Kenya to use Drill Pack, which did a lot, but didn't one shot. Venusaur used Sleep Powder, so I woke up Kenya just for her to take a Sludge Bomb, and... You know what, just watch. Uh oh. That's not good. I don't know if Kenya can take this. Oh crap. Oh no. No, 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 no! No, the hail! No! 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 Come on! No! I U turned with Kenya to get her out of there and sent in B, who used Psychic and almost killed Venusaur. Venusaur shot back with Sleep Powder, and Hail wasn't enough to take him out. On the turn that I woke up Bean, Red healed Venusaur and undid all my hard work. I used Psychic once again, and it didn't kill. Venusaur put Bean to sleep again, I healed, and so did Red. I tried using Psy Beam the next turn to make sure Red didn't heal it, and Venusaur put me to sleep again. I healed Bean again, and Venusaur used Sludge Bomb, almost killing me. I took a major gamble and used Psy Beam on the Venusaur at low health, hoping to outspeed. And I did. I killed Venusaur, I beat Red, and I won the Nuzlocke. That is it. Red has been defeated. And he disappeared. Well, um, that's it. We won. And so ends the longest running series on my YouTube channel, guys. Um, it's kind of crazy to think about, but yeah, the Nuzlocke is finally over after over a year. So thank you all so much for watching this series and, and uh, everything like that, and I hope you all enjoyed. A few quick takeaways from this Nuzlocke. Uh, number one, don't pick Totodile. Don't. Um, <laughs> as much as I love you, Erwin, you are outclassed by Gyarados in every way, and Johto doesn't really have a lot of fire types to choose from, so I would much prefer uh, picking Cyndaquil and then picking up a water type like Gyarados or Politoed or something like that along the way. Another takeaway from this challenge is that Ampharos is very, very good in a Johto playthrough, and it should be a staple on every single Johto team because, well, it's awesome. Another takeaway is that Firo is kind of underrated, and Mamoswine is a surprisingly good pick for a Johto playthrough. But with its bulkiness and stab earthquake and blizzard and ice beam, uh, it's a big help in fighting Claire and the other Elite Four members, and I highly recommend it if you are able to put it on your team. But yeah, guys, if you did like this Nuzlocke, don't worry, there will probably be more at some point. Uh, right now, I'm a little burnt out, and I want to take a little bit of a break from the Nuzlocke, but eventually, uh, it will definitely be coming back um, to the channel. I will probably be doing another Nuzlocke sometime in spring 2023, and I think that one I might live stream and then uh, do something like I did here with the highlight reel. If you guys enjoyed this, let me know. If you didn't, that's cool too, let me know too. Uh, I just want to know what you guys think about this, and what you guys think I should be doing going forward, because, you know, I'm trying to appeal to you guys. This is my last or second to last video of 2022, depending on how things go. I know there was a delay in the video coming out, and I am sorry about that. Um, there was just, I didn't really have the time to edit this, and there was almost another delay due to a family emergency, um, but thankfully that's been resolved. It's currently about 2 in the morning <laughs> on the 22nd, so, um, yeah, don't worry guys, this video will be coming out on time. 
Um, so, and if this is rambling, then uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. What could I say? I recorded this at two in the morning. But um, yeah, guys, it's been really cool doing this Nuzlocke, and I hope you all enjoyed it. And I hope you guys are going to stay tuned for everything we have going on on the channel next year. Cause it's going to be a big year full of lots of EU4 and lots of Pokemon stuff, and I hope you guys are going to be here for it. So, with that all said, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm the Big Sal. Happy holidays, and I'll see you next year.